Welcome to the IG. My name is Mackie Hall. And dripping text, dripping shapes, they're cool. Why? Because this technique takes what you're used to seeing to a whole new level, especially with type. Not only that, but it is so easy. All you need to know how to do is draw a straight line, thicken it, round the edges, join those lines to your shape, and then bevel the connection points. Now, check out this original and this finished version. By the way, that's what we're building today. It's progressive, maybe a little street, maybe a little punk. Either way, it works. All right, in this video, you'll learn basic stroke management, how to build and join shapes, then how to bevel where shapes join. Now, while this technique works on a ton of stuff, it's best to use on big, thick type or bold shapes. Otherwise, the drops tend to muddy and overwhelm the original piece. All right, this is a great fundamentals video that can take you miles down the road. Let's go. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and create a new file. Now, our new file is going to have a width of 1,000 points, a height of 1,000 points, a single artboard. Let's go ahead and use the RGB color mode. Why? We're going to screen. Let's go ahead and click Create. Okay, before we get started, I want to mention that we are using the Essentials Classic Workspace. Switch on over to the Essentials Classic Workspace. All you need to do, go to the top right-hand corner, select Essentials Classic. Now, why am I using Essentials Classic? Piece of cake, because it shows the most, it's best for learning. Now, if you want to use your own workspace, by all means, go for it. We'll take you to the places you need to go. Next thing I want to mention is we are using Smart Guides. To activate Smart Guides, all you need to do is go to View, Smart Guides or select Control U. Next, it's worth mentioning we're using the bottom center of our page to highlight hotkey recommendations, key command recommendations, and tips and tricks. Now, with that in mind, we're building this piece on a PC. So anytime we recommend the Control key, if you're using an app or Mac device, use Command instead. Again, Command equals Control. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and grab our type tool. Let's click anywhere on our artboard. Let's go ahead and write the word drip. Once we've done that, let's go ahead and double click on our type. Let's select it all. And then let's change our character style over to Peace Sans. Now, if you don't have Peace Sans, that's okay. All you need to do is do a general search to find it, or of course, just go straight on over to fontsquirrel.com. Use the URL below, or of course, just do a search for Peace Sans. Now, once we've selected Peace Sans and entered drip, Let's go ahead and change our type size from 12 points to 200. Let's make that thing nice and visible right there. Next, let's go ahead and open up our type tool and let's make our type all caps. Now, how do we do that? Well, we can go to our right toolbar, of course, and click on our type tool to open up our window just like that. Or you can click on your character window right up on your top bar. I don't like that very much. Or you can go to window type and select character from there. Of course, you can hit Control T instead. Now that we've got that up, let's go ahead and click on our menu drop down and let's select all caps. Now, once we've got that, let's take a look at our type and let's just play with a little bit of kerning. I like the type, but I think the D and the P are a little bit far away from the letters next to them. So let's go ahead and select the D and let's arrow down our tracking or our kerning to bring the type into the right space. That looks a little bit better right there. Let's change the I and let's bring the P a little closer as well. Let's grab our selection tool. Let's go ahead and deselect. That makes it look a lot better. Now that we've got that, let's go ahead and select our type one more time and let's go ahead and align it to the top center of our page. We do that by selecting a line right there or if you don't have your align tool available, go to Window, Align, or Shift F7. If you click on that, you can see your align tool pop right up there. All right, now that we've got that done, we don't need to edit our type anymore. Instead, what we wanna do is we wanna change our type shapes to editable shapes instead. How do we do that? All we need to do is go to Object, Expand. Once our Expand window pops up, let's make sure that Object and Fill are selected. Let's go ahead and click OK. And note straight away that our type is now editable shapes. Once done with that, let's go ahead and simplify our type 
The reason we do that is we want to get rid of as many anchor points as possible. That's going to prevent too many anchor points, and it's going to prevent us from using our bevel points properly to get that nice drip effect. So how do we do that? All we need to do is go to Object, Path, Simplify. Note right away when we selected that, our type shape simplified. How much? Let's go ahead and click on the drop down. Let's go about halfway down our simplify window. Note right here that originally we had 41 points. Now we've got 32 points. If you want to continue to try to simplify, by all means go for it. But in my world, that works just fine. So let's go ahead and click OK. Note right away where your anchor points are. That's going to come into play later. Right, once we've got that, let's go ahead and zoom into our tape shapes just a little bit. Now, once we're set with that, let's go ahead and deselect our shape. Let's go ahead and grab our pen tool and let's get with the business of setting our drips. How do we do that? Piece of cake, all you need to do is click and release anywhere inside your type shapes, hold your shift key, and then go down to where you want your drips to end and click off of it. Check it out. Looks good right there. Now, to end our line selection, all we need to do is press our control key. Notice our direct selection tool comes up. Let's click off of our shape and let's go ahead and continue. Let's go ahead and set our lines all the way through. Note my use of the control key as I'm doing this. One more time, let's deselect. All right, now that we've got that done, that looks great. And by the way, we've got our character window open. We don't need that anymore. So let's go ahead and close that. Now, now that we've got that done, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and build our drips. The way we do that, let's go ahead and grab our selection tool. Let's click and drag across our entire shapes just like that. Once that's set, let's hold our shift key and deselect the word drip. Release the shift key and notice that we've got our lines selected. Now with that done, Let's go ahead and make sure that our lines are set to black or of course just matching our type color. And let's go ahead and make our fill transparent and our stroke black. I'll do this on my end by trading our fill and stroke just like that. Once that's done, we can go up to our stroke window up top or of course open our stroke window on our right toolbar by clicking and releasing just there. That's what we want, but there's another way to open up our stroke window too. All we need to do is go to Window, Stroke, or select Control F10. Let's do it. Now that we've got that, let's go ahead and increase our stroke weight from 1 to 10 points. That looks good right there. Next thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and round our caps. Looks great. Let's go ahead and deselect our line shapes. And you can already see the drips taking effect. All we need to do now is move our line segments to where we want them. And then, of course, bevel the intersecting points. So let's go ahead and do that. With our stroke thickness and our round caps, that's all we need to do with our stroke window. So let's go ahead and close that. And now let's go ahead and convert our line segments from strokes to filled elements. How do we do that? Well, we can click and drag across our line segments just like that with our selection tool. That's one way to do it. Or, of course, you can drag across your entire shape, hold your shift key, and deselect the word. Once that's done, let's go ahead and change line shapes to filled shapes. The way we do that is by going to Object, Expand, and then again, making sure Fill and Stroke is selected. Let's go ahead and click OK. Check out what happens to our strokes. Note right away that they become filled shapes. Now we're really close, believe it or not. All we need to do now is take a look at our piece, make sure that our drips are where we want them. If we want to reposition anything, this is our time to do it. So let's go ahead and deselect our shape and let's go ahead and select individual stroke elements and just move them. This is one that I want to move off the edge. That looks a little bit better right there. Let's go ahead and take a look around. That's the only one I really want to do offhand. But before I go ahead joining the shape and beveling the corners, I wanted to bring up that anchor point issue. We need to check if any of our drips are close to anchor points again because that will affect the way we bevel. So let's go ahead and click and drag across our entire shape just like this. Let's release and note on our D right here that one of our drips is really, really close to one of the anchor points. That's going to prevent us from getting a good bevel 
on our drip. And that's going to be really important. How do we fix that piece of cake? All we need to do is take that drip and move it on top of the anchor point. Check it out. All I'm going to do is select it. I'll click on that drip and I'm going to arrow it to the left just a few times. I think that covered it right there. Let's go ahead and check one more time. Let's click and drag across our entire shape. And that covers it just barely, but that's good enough right there. If we look around the rest of the shape, I think we're good to go. So let's go ahead and combine all of our shapes. Now, how do we do that? Piece of cake. There's two ways to do it. The first way, note that all of our shapes are selected. We can grab our shape builder tool right here and we can click and drag across all of our shapes just like that. Now, not only is this time consuming, that can be dangerous. Why? Because if I drag across any of the holes in my shape, notice that it fills the hole just like that. And we don't want that. We want to make sure that our letter shapes maintain their integrity. I'm going to undo that. Let's go ahead and pick an alternative way. Now with our shape still selected, let's go ahead and do this instead. Let's go up and grab our Pathfinder tool. We do that by going to Window, Pathfinder, or Shift Control F9. Remember that if you want. Once our Pathfinder window is open, let's go up to Shape Modes on the top line and let's select Unite. Check out what happens to our shape. Notice now that our word is a series of unified shapes. That's exactly what we want. Now all we need to do is bevel the corners. Check out how we do that. Let's go ahead and grab our Direct Selection tool and let's click anywhere on our artboard to deselect our shape. What we can do is either individually or in small groups, we can drag across the anchor points joining our drips with our letter shapes. Let's go ahead and take these two right here. Now let's click and drag them down until we've got that drip that we want. Let's go ahead and deselect it right there. Note the change. Now let's go ahead and do the rest of our shape. Note that you can do multiple intersection points at one time, or you can work on them individually if you see fit. Now, before I finish my piece off, I want to give you a word of caution. Now, check out when I select this intersection point right here. If I click and drag both of the intersection points, because it's on a curve, note how the drip or the bevel is inconsistent. The way we fix that is we work on our bevel points individually. Check it out. First, I'm going to deselect my shape. And then let's go ahead and grab our first anchor point and let's click and drag our bevel point out until we're happy with it. That looks pretty good right there. Let's go ahead and deselect our shape. And now let's go ahead and grab this right bevel point right here. Let's click and drag it out until it matches. That looks pretty good right there. Let's go ahead and deselect. Well, that looks pretty good right there. Let's bring our whole page into view. Love how it looks. All we need to do now is let's give it a little bit of color. Let's grab our selection tool. Let's click on our shape. Let's go ahead and make this a nice looking pink right here. Let's double click on our fill. Let's find that purple pink space. I like that right there. Let's click on the pink that works for us. That looks good right there. Let's click on it. Let's go ahead and deselect. And that looks terrific. Let's go ahead and center it on our page. How do we do that? Let's click and drag across our shape. Let's go ahead and go to align. Let's click vertical align center. Let's deselect. Heck yeah. That looks terrific. And with that, we are done. Nice job. I want to level this up. Add an offset stroke behind the type. Take it to the next level and give it form by adding an offset stroke and an inside highlight. Teasing a video, aren't I? Want to do something different? Make it horizontal and show some movement. Now, with that being said, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, throw me a like. I'd really appreciate that. Otherwise, subscribe. I'd appreciate that just a little bit more. We'll see you next time. Peace.